It's like, it's like I read my utmost versus highest and it's like, oh, bam, 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 kind of knocks me around and gets my attention. But then I come to Tozer and it's like, oh yeah, let's, let's, let's get some steak. <laughs> let's dig into this. Let's find out what it is that, you know, God would say to both of us, you know, or to all of us or to anyone or to someone, you know, and I, I really love it. I just love the way that God has so orchestrated these devotionals that they seem to just build upon and build up, you know, the faith that we have, you know, that we share in common, you know, that maybe, you know, you may come from more of a Pentecostal background and then someone else may come from more of a traditional background and someone else may come from more of a Catholic background and someone else from a Jewish background. But the point is, is that if you've been born again, whatever background you're coming from, you're heading for one destination. And it's exciting. You're becoming like Jesus. You're moving into the fullness of the body of Christ. You're becoming all that God intended you to be. And for me, that's like, wow, can you imagine the family gathered together once in heaven? Cool. <laughs> Let's go. I remember in the Jesus movement, it was always so exciting. The one thing that you could always count on, you never starved to death in the Jesus movement. You know why? Because wherever there was a potluck, you had communion, potluck, guitars. <laughs> you got the word too a little bit sometimes, but most of the time it was a potluck. And you just go and you'd eat and you'd get all this delicious food, you know, and everybody would be singing and worshiping, you know, and we'd have a good old time, you know, and it was... It was like you'd say a kumbaya moment, except for we were singing kumbaya, so... <laughs> it was just a marvelous, wonderful, joyful time of people not knowing so much that they separated themselves, but knowing so little that they joined themselves together to magnify and to celebrate one person, and that was Jesus. And we didn't know everything. We just celebrated Jesus. That's it. So, it was fun. And I think that's what the Marriage Supper of the Lamb is going to be like. It's going to be a blast. <laughs> I hope you're there. <laughs> I'd hate to miss it. In Tozer, faith is more than believing the evidence. Yes, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou, mightest be, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings. Romans 3, 4. Faith, based upon reason, may be kind of a faith, but it is not the character of Bible faith, for it follows the evidence infallibly and has nothing of a moral or spiritual nature in it. It is based upon reason. Neither can the absence of faith based upon reason be held against anyone, for the evidence, not the individual, decides the verdict. To send a man to hell whose only crime was to follow evidence straight to its proper conclusion would be palpable injustice. To justify a sinner on the grounds that he had made up his mind according to the plain facts would be to make salvation the result of the workings of a common law of the mind as applicable to Judas or as to Paul. It would take salvation out of the realm of volition and choice and place it in the mental abilities where according to the scripture it does not belong. Faith is not accomplished by thinking it through. True faith rests upon the character of God and asks no further proof than the moral perfections of the one who cannot lie. It is enough that God said it, and if the statement should contradict every one of the five senses that we have and all the conclusions of logic that we maintain as well, still the believer continues to believe because faith is not based upon the logic or the senses or the feelings. Let God be true, but every man a liar is the language of true faith. Heaven approves such faith because it rises above mere proofs and rests in the bosom of God. You know, following up on just Tozer's idea there, people tell me, well, God can't do anything. You know, he can't, he can't do what he hasn't already said in Scripture. Want to bet? <laughs> well, he can't, he can't perform something unless he first tells the prophets. Want to bet? Well, 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 but, 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 God can't. Want to bet? Because as soon as you put can't next to God, you've already contradicted your own terms. 
God is God. Literally, that means anything that you perceive with your mind, that you think with your heart, that you identify, even with your own faith, that you have put into what you think you know, falls short of the reality that God is the creator and he created you, which means you are limited in your understanding and he's not. That's pretty simple. In other words, he can do as he chooses to and he chooses to reveal things to us at times. Doesn't mean we have the full counsel of God. Give me a break. <laughs> our brains would explode. It doesn't mean that we know everything. Give me a break. Again, our beings would erupt in disruption. There's no way we're going to know everything or understand everything because we're created. We are not God. We are created beings. So the sooner you get to the reality of knowing that God, you can trust. Anything else, better be careful. Because there are people that will stand on scripture and tell you this is what it is, and yet they can prove themselves that if you look in the volume of the book, Jesus said it himself, look in the volume of the book, it speaks of me. And yet, the Jew who was so knowledgeable in the scripture that knew the volume of the book couldn't identify Jesus himself. What do you say to these things? Trust in the Lord, not man, with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him. Then He directs our path. Not we, not me, not I, not your church, not your pastor, not your deacon, not your elder, not your scripture, not your word, not your study, not your this, not your that, not anything. Let God direct you, <laughs> and He will get a personal relationship like Jesus had with his father, develop that personal intimacy with God himself, and God himself will take you all the way through into eternity and beyond. Because that's who you're gonna spend time with. Jesus is going to bless you phenomenally as you begin to get to know him personally, and as you become born again, not of the flesh and the mind and the intellect and the, the reality of what people say, but the intimacy of being born of the Spirit, that you don't follow the Holy Spirit now and make that a God or make that an idol and worship feelings, but you follow God himself because Jesus introduced us to the Father and the Father loves us. And Jesus didn't say, hey, I want you to come worship me instead of the Father. <laughs> Far from it. He said, the Father loves you even more than I do and that we could know him. And that is what your goal is. To discover, to enjoy, and to be real with your Father who is in heaven.